and welcome to the latest show in the lineup here on KFAR. This is Patriots Lament. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine here, running the board and making it possible for the sponsors of the show to be able to get on and talk about the liberty issues that mean the most to them. Joining me in the studio on my left, but certainly not to the left of me politically, we have uh, Josh Bennett from Big Run Enterprises. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Steve. And to his left, my right, Dave Giesel from the Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Steve. Gentlemen, what is on your mind today? Uh, well, the first first thing, uh, we'll, we'll get into the meat later, but the first thing is the Occupy guys are having a open carry day today at noon at Veterans Memorial Park. And they want to raise awareness of our rights, the Bill of Rights, and specifically the Second Amendment. So for all of you open carriers or tea partiers, um, it's an open invitation to you guys to go down and meet them at Veterans Memorial Park at noon today. And moving on. Yeah, no, and, and not uh, to have a confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go. Dave, uh, Occupied Dave is what we call him. He is... Uh, said that he's calling it the Come and Learn About Your Liberties and Open Carry event. He says that the main focus will be on discussing and educating people about the Bill of Rights and the illustrative open expression on the, of the Second Amendment. The Bill of, while the Bill of Rights are not an exhaustive list of our inherent liberties, it says so right there in number nine, the amendments are a good start. So that's what it's about. It's not uh, my gun's bigger than yours. It's an uh, actual get-together to talk about basic human Liberties. Right, which are inherent, not because of a piece of paper. What? Or the lack of a piece of paper, as some people experience this week. But I've, <laughs> but, but that could never happen here, because I've got, we've got the Bill of Rights. We've got the Constitution to protect us. Yeah. yeah you know, this, this, More I, than one. We've got the uh, one that they hang up somewhere in D.C., and one the I state s- one. assume is in Juneau. Well, you know what? What yeah, tells so, me is that I, I hear people all the time saying that they, they'll depend they'll depend on the Constitution to keep them safe and to keep them from having the, their, their liberties taken away. And, and the question that I have is, well, what happens if somebody else doesn't recognize your Constitution? What happens if they come? You know, if 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 the Fourth Amendment says that we're supposed to be free from the freedom or, or free from search and seizure without a warrant, somebody comes to your house and doesn't have a warrant, what do you do? Do you not let them in? It uh, depends on if it's your neighbor or if it's law enforcement or supposed law enforcement with a bunch of guns. What, what if there are 20 guys with guns at your door pushing their way into your house? What if there's two? How many how many guns does it take to kill you? I mean, the, the, the question that I have is at what point do you, I mean, are you going to stand on your principles and die in a hail of bullets? Or are you going to say, no, go right ahead and walk on my constitution? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. yeah that's that a that's that's a real question. You know, there's uh, uh, I met with uh, Dave. We're, we're of course talking about what happened this week, which I'm sure most of the listeners know about. If you don't go to patriotslament.blogspot.com, you can read all about it. Um, I met with Dave this week, uh, Occupy Dave, and I met him at a coffee shop. And I sit down, and he has this book open, and he pushes it across the table to me, and he's like, "Read the first paragraph." And right there. Uh, do you have that up, Josh? Yeah. Here's here's what um, he wanted me to read. This is uh, from Thomas Paine's Common Sense. Perhaps the sentiments contained in the following pages are not yet sufficiently fashionable to procure them for general favor. A long habit of not thinking a thing wrong gives it a superficial appearance of being right and raises and raises at first a formidable outcry in defense of customs. But tumult soon subsides. Time makes more converts than reason. So so he has me read that, and um, this was on Wednesday or Thursday. It was after all the events had gone down. And I was like, wow, very pertinent to the events of the week. And he's like, what what went on this week? Because he's had his head in his book studying for finals. So this guy on his own, you know, this Occupy guy, um, on his own is is studying these principles of liberty, right? And... And uh, kind of this fundamental stuff. While at the same time, there are conservative people in the media in this town who, you know, not occupiers, but so-called conservatives, who come on various forms of media and say, well, 
I think we all expected uh, this guy to have his rights trampled on because he's been speaking out, right? And so that's an interesting conflict. That's an interesting question in my mind. You have an occupier who's studying the, the principles of liberty, the fundamental documents, and you know, and is having me read the, the first paragraph of the intro to Common Sense. And then you have these so-called conservatives who are saying, well, yeah, I mean, their rights are in the Constitution, and that's very cute, but you know, they were speaking out against the government, so they had it coming to them. Yeah, and if you don't know, Common Sense is basically the... It was the book of liberty. It was the book of the revolution at the time. I mean, it had a very major impact in getting people's opinions swayed to fight England. Yeah, well, even just to like oppose, you know, it circulated for quite quite some time, yeah. and just was a it was a crystallization of the people's thought at the time. Um, but I, I found that quite interesting, you know, where where our our common sense radio, you know, our push for liberty in this town, quote unquote, these people are coming out against people who are, you know, standing up for their rights. And it's the, the occupiers, you know, these people coming coming from the left, so-called, who are actually studying the principles and, and uh, foundations of this country. And that's, you know, is that, isn't that that disturbing? I mean, it's... <laughs> So it's a little disturbing to me. I mean, it's great. I think it's great. And those Occupy guys are awesome. Everybody should go down there at noon and meet those guys. But on the other hand, you know, these these people who we're supposed to vote for, who are for our liberties, you know, who may or may not be in office already, uh, what's up with that? Seriously, that's pathetic. It is disgusting and sad. Yeah, that brings up a good point with what you said, who may or may not be voted into office. Where are any of our elected officials with what, with what happened here uh, Tuesday? I haven't heard one of them say a dang thing about it. None of them. And the whole point, I mean, if you guys don't, surely you know, but if you don't, the other day a house was broken into, mine, and some people came with some guns, wanted in the house, and asked for a warrant and they didn't have one it was unsealed a day or two later i guess the next day it was unsealed which whatever a sealed warrant means i have no idea i guess nowadays you sign a warrant put it in a lock box and make sure no one snacks it snaps it from you so you can say nope i had it because apparently in the past when they've shown warrants people have snacked them snabbed them I'm like oh he didn't have a warrant well he took it from me no so they sealed it up to keep it safe and Dave and I have asked this question before, and it really hit home to me Tuesday. What good is our state government? Seriously, what possible reason do we have a state government? They they sit down in Juneau and pass a budget. Well, they don't even do that. We've we know that's not. We've talked correct. about that too. <laughs> so what good are they? They don't do squat. We have a state government. I mean, this is theoretical. These people get voted in. And supposedly they uh, take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the state of Alaska and the United States of America. Well, the state constitution in Article 1, Section 14 says that we have the right to be secure in our homes without and can't be searched without warrant. Um, we know the Fourth Amendment says the same thing in the United States Constitution. So we have this supposed uh, agreement with these legislators that... Uh, they will uphold and defend our rights if we elect them to public office. Bull. Not one of them has stood up and said, not just this case. I mean, there's more. This isn't isolated. Not one of them stood up and said, hey, feds, you can't do that. We have a constitution. We will demand that you show this warrant or even an inquiry, even anything. I mean, I've not heard one word. I bet because they're all scared, but that's fine. But yeah, why the, do we have them? There's well, a, where's the, that contract? I mean, breach of contract, hello, Constitution. That's your guys' contract to us that if we allow you to go to Juno to rule over us, is what you're doing, actually, that you will follow this Constitution and protect our liberties. Well, you just broke your contract because my liberties were violated, and none of you were even say a dang thing about it. Where are you, Governor? Who rules your state? If you don't, if you don't have jurisdiction here, pack it up. Go home, send everyone back home from Juno, close down the Juno building, shut it up, board it up, sell it, 
throw it in the public coffers, give it out in a dividend. You guys are worthless. You don't, you're not worth a dang thing. You're just, get a machine that gets a rubber stamp <laughs> and goes stamp, stamp every time the federal government does whatever they want. Just get your little stamp, approved, 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 approved. Well, that's what all what they're already doing, basically, just without a machine. It's yeah, just but it's costing us a lot of money. Just, just, get, rid of the, just get rid of the middleman. Let's just, just be ruled directly from Washington. Correct. <laughs> um, yeah, the question, um, I raised this on, again, on the blog. I, I made a post, and there's all... There's Begich, Murkowski, and Don Young's phone numbers, and um, all of the Interior delegation, um, all of our local representatives and the governor, their phone numbers and email. And I would actually encourage encourage people to go to the website, go to patriotslament.blogspot.com, and find that post. It's down a page or so. And call these people, or send them an email, and ask them the question that I asked them in that blog post. And the question was, who has jurisdiction in the state of Alaska? Who has jurisdiction in the state of Alaska? If the governor, the executive of the state of Alaska, does not have jurisdiction, then he has no more say than if I put you know, a fancy hat on and said I'm king of town, right? If he doesn't have ultimate jurisdiction as the executive of his state, then what is he doing there? And to all of the, uh, you know, Patriot, Tea Party types, whatever, quivering in his who, boots. who who believe in, well, he might he might not even have power, even if he wasn't quivering in his boots, he might have just had the power stripped away legally. That's a possibility. I don't know. That's the question. Who has jurisdiction in this state? Ask them and demand an answer. And if you're going to believe in all these fantasies of nullification and the state standing up to the feds, which we've heard talked about for years now. Tenth Amendment, Dave. Yeah, Tenth Amendment. Ah, ah. Okay. Let's see it, because what they've always said, it, you know, you, these the people, the voters are like, we want people who will stand up for the Tenth Amendment, and the people running for office are like, yeah, we need people who will stand up for the Tenth Amendment, and then they get elected. Well, guess who that is? Guess who those people are who's supposed to stand up for the Tenth Amendment? The people who got elected. They're going to have to actually do it, and I don't think they have legal jurisdiction to do it anymore, but I would sure like to have that question answered so we can either put this fantasy of the possibility of nullification to death, or we can do it. Right. I would like to either see it done or see the idea removed from public discussion as a fantasy. You know, San, Santa Claus isn't real. The tooth fairy isn't real. And yeah. perhaps nullification. Hey, hey, fits we have, into we that have same kids realm. listening to this show. Oh, I, I'm, don't, I'm don't, don't, don't don't say that about Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. My kids already know. So close what? to so close to Christmas. What? <laughs> well, their parents are telling them that, that the state has jurisdiction. So that's not true either. Let's just get rid of the lies, right? Us adults, we believe all these lies, too. It's like, let's just be honest about what it is. If if this state is ultimately run by the federal government, if the federal government has complete jurisdiction here, then let's just be honest about it, right? Then at least we can, you know, we can live our lives accordingly. Accept our chains a little more. Right. I mean, if you're, if you're in jail, it's better to know you're in jail than, than to think you're free, right? Because then you don't get into little little scuffles with the prison guards, yeah, let's just be honest with ourselves. Let's cut the crap. Get to the point. This uh, Tenth Amendment is null and void. It means nothing. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it, well, right. it, that, that's... While, while you're at it, though, I mean, that <laughs> the Tenth Amendment is null and void. What about the, what about the First <laughs> Amendment? Let's start with that one. Well, oh, all do the you, other ones. Do you really all... have the freedom to say what you want to? Do you have the freedom to to gather? I mean, we talked about this last week with the Occupy Wall Street people. Can do you actually have the freedom to go out and assemble wherever you want to with whomever you want to? If not if you don't have the right permit. Well, right. If And in theory, in theory, the governor and uh, the, legislat- the legislature in Juneau, uh, they can enforce the state uh, constitution, which guarantees those rights still because there hasn't been a state Patriot Act. But if they do not have ultimate jurisdiction, if the federal government has ultimate jurisdiction in this state, then they cannot do that. And then you're right. The other 10 amendments are toast. Or the other nine, right? So let's just, let's find out. Who has jurisdiction in this state? You know, ask ask Tammy Wilson, you know, Fairbanks' mom. Who Tammy, who has jurisdiction in this state? John Coghill, who has jurisdiction in this state? That question has to be answered. Somebody needs to put it in writing and say, we do, and this is what we're going to do about it. Or we do not prepare for the worst. I think it's uh, already been answered. We had uh, that judge in the uh, 241 case threw out all that evidence because he said, under state law, these things cannot be done. And the feds went, meh. What do they care? 
So under state law, yeah. Well, this is still the state of Alaska, this little circle that we kind of semi-circle that we have. This is the state of Alaska. So a state judge says, under our laws, you are whatever, you know, you're secure. Yeah, right. But if the feds don't have to listen to them, what good is the state? Why do we have a state government? Right. The, the feds don't care. The whole principle of, you know, federalism, which is the system we supposedly have, is this fantasy that the states are sovereign and the federal government is just something they agree to be part of. I think that ended in 1792, though. That, there's, there's a lot of dates at which that could have ended. Uh, 1860s is another possibility, 1861. Yeah. But why are we still, you know, when elections come up, we still, we still we still talk about it. Why do we still talk about it? Let's figure out what it is. Let's be honest about it, and then let's move forward accordingly. Yeah, we can take the fantasies away. That's all you're saying, right? That's all Just I'm saying. Get this stuff. Let's stay up on the December 24th and look for a, a fat guy to come down the chimney. You know, and if he doesn't, then okay, the, We've got that the myth is gone, out. right? We can move on. We can talk. Then we can forget about that stuff, and we can start talking about important things like dry wood. <laughs> we can start talking about the things that matter in this state, in this community, and that is freaking dry wood yeah. and fresh air. Right. And quit talking about all this gobbledygook-like rights. You want to have clean air in the prison camp, don't you, Josh? <laughs> I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that clean air. You guys ready to go to the phones? Yeah, let's do it. 458-TALK yeah. is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lounge. Who's this? Good morning. This is Al. Al, go ahead. Morning, Al. I'm glad you guys are talking about inheritance rights this morning. Uh, I sent you guys an email. Maybe you haven't read it yet this morning. But, uh, again, we have the Alaska State Troopers Wildlife Enforcement, you know, imposing or proposing to the Board of Game that all licensed taxidermists shall keep records that they can inspect, our own personal property. And, and I'm just outraged that, you know, this has even gone on as far as it has when we pointed out it's unconstitutional to be able to search and seize or without a warrant Weren't, personal effects. Uh, Al, didn't – I wasn't at that meeting, but – so correct me if I'm wrong here, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I thought that you said when you were at that meeting, I think it was the game commissioner said, we don't care if it's constitutional or not. Well, hmm. right now, down to how many lawyers agree or disagree – they currently have two assistant attorney generals saying that there is no constitutional problems with this, and then we have one assistant attorney general saying there is a constitutional problem with this. Yeah, which just leads down to the whole basic deal of why all of this is crap. Because all, of it. all these people have to do is find some judge or find whatever uh, legal scholar or constitutional scholar is my favorite one mm -hmm. to say. Oh, no, this doesn't violate it. Well, you know darn well it violates your rights. Well, okay? uh, we know. We, the average person out here with half of a brain cell, not a brain, but even a brain cell, knows when his rights are violated, knows yeah. when the government is violating them. And we don't need lawyers and judges and whatever to, to who are taking them away to tell us, well, no, nah, that's, that's in the, yeah, that fits under the scope. Your rights, eh. We don't need that. I mean, that proves the whole thing. They're taking them away a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, telling you you're wrong. But in your heart, you know darn well they can't do that. No, I mean, they they work off permits and licensing. You want a license or you want a permit, you have to surrender your rights to accept that permit or license. Yes. And where does it say that anywhere in the Constitution, that if you accept a license or a permit, you just arbitrarily give up something that was granted to you. Well, actually, that's just the way it is. If you accept the license and the permit, then you have ceded your rights. Yeah. Because it was your right in the first place to do what you want. Once you get the permit, then you said, yeah, it's not my right. I'm not getting on you, Al. I'm yeah, talking no, to you. I'm, I'm they, gave me, you. they gave me permission, they gave me permission to do it. And when they give you permission, they set the rules, and they can take the permission away. It's just like when we have all these deals where we... Uh, pass laws to tell us what our rights are, you know, new ones. And it's like, why do you want uh, – a good example was the par parental uh, – No, Parental Rights Act. Yeah. Grandfather rights. Same Grandfather deal. Grandfather rights. Same deal. Yep, yeah, exactly. Why do you want to let them tell you what your rights are? That's another, that's another thing Dave noticed. We got into that discussion. I was like, well, what about the grandfather rights thing? He's like, you can't even have grandfather rights. You either have a right or you don't. Yeah. How can they be grandfathered in? Yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I just – just can't believe this goes on like it does, and you see the incremental of uh, 
of uh, regulations and law just taking everybody's rights away, you know, trying to make a living. I've been in this community for 20 years. If something like this passes, I'll operate till they come down here and, and want to seize my paperwork, and, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Are you announcing that you do not plan on following this law, Al? No, if it passes, no, there's no way. I'll have my lawyer's number right there, and, and I'll refuse to submit my paperwork to them because they're not asking anymore. They're demanding. Yeah. And, that, and that falls under the Constitution. They can come in and ask to search your house or look at your paperwork and you can, you know, or search your car, but you don't have to let them. And that's what they don't like anymore. Al, Al. They're authorities. They want to demand things. Al, let's say that you did choose not to let them. If they come with guns, how do you choose not to let them search you? Well, they'll just stuff me and cuff me and then go do their search. Yeah, good point. Yep. That's exactly what they'll do. That's all they do. That's I mean, right. that's all you can do unless that's all you, you want to you know, build the barricade and do that. I'm not really in for that. I mean, nope. And that ends worse than being mm-hmm. in jail. I have, a, I have a better footing in the court system, I guess. Yep. Or I just close my shop and go get a government job. <laughs> Those are secure. Now that's security. That's mm. security. You know? That's secure right right there. Good good health care, too. <laughs> Thanks so, for the call, Al. All right, yeah, Appreciate fine. it. 458-TALK is number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hey, this is Jim, the curmudger from the Valley. How are you guys doing today? Good. Hey, um, <laughs> you, you have so many things going on in my head uh, from the beginning of your discussion on... Um, but I'll, I'll take the last one, the question you guys just asked the previous caller. How do you stop them? Well, everybody here knows that it's against the law to violate your constitutional rights. But if you look in Title 18, you'll find the actual statutes and their penalties and other, per, other <coughs> descriptions of how you invoke them. So a trooper shows up at your house. He wants to search your records. He doesn't have a warrant. You say, do you have a warrant? He says, no. You say, then your search of my house violates Title 18, Section that I. Do you insist on doing this? If he says, well, yes, then you say, then I'll have to place you under citizen's arrest if you insist. Yeah, then you get shot. How about this part? No, 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 I have done it. It stops them. They go, oh, well, I'm going to call my, my superior. Fine. Get him down here, too. And pretty soon you have a couple of them, or three of them, or four of them. And then finally, what they'll say is you have a bad attitude, and they'll take the man you arrested away. And now you it's say very quiet. They don't mention it. They don't talk to anybody about it. You say you've done this before? Yes, I have. And it works. Oh yeah. Well, they made an armed escape. <laughs> I was on. A, they were armed, and they left with him. And he said, "Who's who's going to enforce that arrest?" I said, "Well." What, what's going to happen is I'll just turn it over to the FBI and let them come get your ass. Right. This is Title 18 of the state constitution. Title 18 of the United States court, uh, Code. Okay. Oh, U.S. Code. It's a federal law. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course you know, the Fed supersedes when it, when it comes to your rights. Okay. And if you're invoking the Fourth Amendment, you have, if you look under, under uh, uh, the Constitution, an argument between a citizen of a state and that state is automatically in the Supreme Court's jurisdiction. Of course, they delegated that, and I don't know how they did that. They didn't have the authority to delegate it in their power, neither did the Congress. But they delegated that to a lower court. You have the right in district court. You, as an individual, could go down. Be right back. At 660 a.m., you can hear the difference. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. The Republican presidential candidates square off for another round of debates tonight, this time in Des Moines, Iowa. Fox's Steve Brown says Newt Gingrich could be a new target. He has become a clear, late front runner. In four consecutive polls done of likely Iowa caucus goers, Gingrich has strung together leads of 13, 14, and 15 percentage points. That's outside the margin of error and the larger lead than any other candidate has had in Iowa all year. And we are running out of time. The Iowa caucuses take place January 3rd. Thousands of demonstrators in Moscow today protesting the recent parliamentary elections. They're alleging ballot stuffing and vote rigging. They carry 
carried signs that read, Putin's party is a party of crooks and thieves and Russia without Putin. They say they want their voices to be heard and won't stop until they are. Fox News' Jessica Gallagher. Researchers say they've successfully treated the blood clotting disorder hemophilia with gene therapy. More studies needed. Fox News, we report, you decide. There will be no turning back. These are difficult times. These are challenging times for our country. What happens here in 2011 happens here. Issues and problems that we're facing now, there's still hope. Local Talk Radio, KFAR, 660 AM. Welcome back to Christmas Talk. Uh, that's right. We're, uh, we're just going to be happy today. <laughs> Think happy Christmassy thoughts. Good morning, Dave. <laughs> morning, Steve. Good morning, Josh. <laughs> Hi, Steve. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Looking good over there. Yeah. Have a good week? Yeah. <laughs> How about your Christmas shopping? Boy, I'll tell you what, that Fred Myers is really busy. <laughs> 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 oh man, you know, I it, it's it's hard for me to to keep on pretending like everything is normal and and happy and hunky dory with you know Christmas time and shopping and that whole thing. When I when I see what's going on and, and when I hear about a person uh, who basically has their rights violated, uh, like you did, Josh, this week with having a person show up to your door, and you ask them, do you have a warrant? And they said yes, but they didn't produce it. They they couldn't show it to you. So, you know, at, at the point where, again, a, a, if someone is bound and determined to violate your rights, it, it seems to me like you can stand and try to fight it on principle and, and you can pull in whatever title and threat of arrest that you want to. But when you're dealing with a whole bunch of guys with guns, it seems to me that their force or their threat of force outweighs your principle any time. And that's what, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that we talked about on the show going all the way back to the, the very first one back in May about that, how government is force. You know, yeah. <laughs> that sums it up. Let's go home. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you, you know, you look at what's going on with uh, other aspects of our, our rights having been violated. It really, we have chosen to let them be violated. Well, um, kind of as a as a group, I guess you could say that. I mean, what what uh, law enforcement in any society in any point in history gets away with, just like Thomas Paine says right there in the introduction to common sense, is whatever people get used to and tolerate. And so, and you see that you see conservative, you know, people in the media saying, "Well, they had it coming to them." Blah, blah, blah. You read the comments in the news miner, you know, uh, same thing. And, and a lot of the comments were good, but, that, or, you know, that's subjective. But a lot of the comments were supportive of the Constitution, let's say. And then a lot of them were, well, you know, Constitution be damned. Um, they probably had something, you know, and they did produce a warrant a day later, you know, so that's pretty cool. And it was it was signed, it was signed, you know, supposedly November 28th and so they had six days to go down to kinko's and make a photocopy or eight days and they didn't but you know it's cool it was unsealed so it's all it's fine and so there you have just an example of what thomas Paine wrote about 230 240 years ago right if people become accustomed to something that that is wrong and they think it right because they're used to it then it becomes right well and we have we have this normalcy bias where People want things to be normal. People don't want to believe that we are living in a police state. We, people don't want to believe that we're living in a dictatorship. Uh, people don't want to believe that you can be arrested without having done anything wrong. No. Well, well, okay, well, he got arrested. He must have done something wrong. It's flipped on its head. If you got arrested, you must have done something wrong. That's right. You know, and, you ask, and you ask a person who believes that, well, what happens if they arrest you? Well, they won't arrest they you. They won't. Well, why, why do you think they won't arrest you? Because I've done nothing wrong. All right, all right. Well, just stay with me here for a second. Assume for a moment that you do get arrested, but I won't be arrested. No, no, no. Just, just what happens if you did get arrested? What, what, how, what would you feel? What would be going on in your head? 
Yeah. No, it's it's an ability to divorce ourselves from reality. You know, this kind of this kind of stuff has been going on for a few years. I mean, it's really it's really ramped up in the last few years. But I've read stories about this online for you know two three years. Uh, Will Grigg writes stories about this every day on on his blog because it happens every day. Uh, you can go out and Google search it. You'll find multiple instances of this every single day. But it doesn't seem real. It's like, oh, well, you know, in Iowa, blah, blah, blah. You know, in, in yeah. Illinois, they, you know, tase a retarded kid in his own house while his mom's screaming at them, you know. Um, and in, and we thought we talked about that story on, on this show. And it's yeah, like we were ostracized for it. Yeah, we got we got yelled at for it. And and so it doesn't seem real. Right. And then it happens here. Right. This is not abstract. This is not, you know, a year ago or whatever. It's not in some far distant land. It's right here, right now. And you must have done something wrong. Must have done something wrong. You must be you must be a, a conservative person in media, Steve. You know, standing on standing on that Constitution and 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 uh, putting your your fellow citizen on the altar. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so this is real. You know, this is not some abstract thing that happens somewhere else. You know, well, not in Alaska. We're safe up here, you know. Sorry. Yeah, and the ground's too hard right now to get on your knees and stick your head in the sand. <laughs> Look at it for what it is. Wake right. up. 458-TALK is the number. We go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Kevin. Kevin, what's on your mind? Yes. Well, I was just, uh, I read the warrant that, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the subpoena or whatever that, you know, they, they went after, uh, Mike Anderson with. And it seems like kind of spurious charges because the, uh, the feds claimed that they didn't know where he was, but yet somehow they magically came to the right house with 20 gunmen, you know, the first try right out of the box. I mean, you know, also they said that he that he was trying to dodge, you know, the the subpoena, but he he evidently had bought a plane ticket to uh, to go testify to the grand jury. I mean, it seems like if you just look at it, it, it seems like the feds are their own worst enemy here. If you, if you read the facts, yeah, it really shows that uh, they're infallible humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's almost like. I mean the the PR it's a PR disaster for him. You know, had they gone and yeah. had they gone to Kinkos and made a couple copies of the warrant, you know, and well, yeah. and had that that would have gone a long ways in their favor. It's just like arrogance getting in the way yeah, of I guess, reality. I guess that's that's my point. Is that is they totally have egg on their face, and and this, you know, they did they did that. They they hold the guy for six days until he can testify. I mean, why they can't just set the guy up with a you know, video camera and, you know, do a deposition like they normally do, I, I don't know. But, you know, they could have taken him if they wanted to, taken him the day before. But, no, they hold him for six days. Um, you know, all this stuff is just insane. It seems like this needs to be publicized far and wide and, and show supposedly their side of the story as well because they they have egg on their face. They're They're their own worst enemy. Yeah, the def- more people that can see this, the more people, you know, that can see that all oh, this this does happen, um, you know, eventually, gradually, little by little, I think we can start to turn the tide in society and and uh, recognize, you know, and get instead of maybe one percent of the, the people in this town realizing that that we've got a problem, maybe we can boost that number up to two percent. Or three. Or three, right. Uh, th- we did, uh, this story did get republished on uh, the Dollar Vigilante blog, and then lourockwell.com picked it up on Friday. And so yeah. on our website, we saw like 7,000 hits um, as a result of it. So um, it is getting out there, and I think for people in this community, um, I think it is having a much more real impact than those stories you hear about this happening in the States. Um so hopefully it does have that impact, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I've, I've been glad every time the uh, feds have come out with another story justifying what they did, because it's just made them look worse every time. Well, oh, no, we did have it. I've come to the conclusion that a sealed warrant is actually a code name for crystal ball, because apparently <laughs> with a subpoena they couldn't find them, but when they made up this magical warrant, they rubbed their hands on it and poof, my house came. Into view. <laughs> and here they can. It's like a yeah, eight ball. Probably at Josh's house. <laughs>
Ask again okay, later. Okay, thanks. Thanks, yeah, for thanks, thanks for the call. 458 Donk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? This is Mark. Mark, go ahead. I just wanted to thank God that you all came through this trial with no issue of blood. Me too. Uh, I got a bad feeling, boys, out here. Thank you. 458 Donk is the number. Good morning. Hey, John here. Hey, John, what's on your Hi, mind? John. Hey, I was just calling in, and again, you know, I mean, one of the things that's a really important point that you guys are bringing up, it wasn't what I originally called, but I've been listening, and, you know, asymmetric media, essentially all of the blogosphere out there, that if we're acting as independent uh, investigative uh, reporters on the issues, you know, when these things come up in our local community, we can get it all over the Internet, and basically the state-controlled media, you know, or the you know, interest controlled media can't control that. So we have just as much information power as they do, you know. And along those lines, uh, I just wanted to mention, I don't know if anybody's mentioned it on the show, this afternoon at Veterans Park there, the uh, Occupy types are sponsoring a rally with, you know, tables with the Bill of Rights out there and so forth, where the idea is, it's much like that scene from, uh, uh, from, uh, Braveheart, where like there's the Irish and the English on one side, supposed enemies, and the uh, Scottish on the other side, and the Irish all run up and then they shake hands. <laughs> you know, they see the Tea Party, at least the local guys, as coming at the same problem from a different angle. You know, and ultimately, instead of shooting flaming arrows at them, what we can do is help them understand from our you know past couple of years of researching the subject what freedom is really about and how to approach it. And uh, I think I've experienced that they've got an open mind to the idea, you know, so as many Tea Party types that are willing to show up down there this afternoon and just ask them a few questions and share a few ideas, you know, basically the, uh, you know, we're all under the same uh, difficulties and challenges from the same groups of people. So, you know, when you help them understand what the real solutions are, maybe some of these, you know, areas that I'd, I'd consider static relative to their movement, you know, the hardcore socialists and, you know, the people who think government is the solution and so on and so forth, uh, by talking to each other instead of trying to beat each other up, you know, we might actually get somewhere. Yeah, so, absolutely. It's like it's like there's the right and the left, and the right has the state's right boot on its throat, and the left has the state's left boot on its throat. And uh, we could remove both boots if we decide to uh, open the lines of communication and come together. Thanks, right. So thanks for the call, John. Thanks for the show. Yeah, thank you, John. Dog is the number. Good morning, caller. You're next. Who's this? This is Randy. Good morning, Randy. Hi there. Uh, last Saturday, I called in about the National Defense Authorization Act, you know, Senate Bill 1867. And uh, at that time last week on Saturday on your show there, I said that that did not apply to American citizens because I was looking at Section 1032 of the Act of Senate Bill 1867. And what I read said that basically they were excluded, and so uh, I jumped to that conclusion, but I found out later on Monday that I was incorrect, and I did call you, uh, Steve, yes, on I next agree. Tuesday I saying that, that I was incorrect, but since I made that error last uh, Saturday on this show, I thought I'd better call in and, and uh, correct myself and say that, uh, Josh, you were right, it does apply to American citizens, and uh, I was incorrect, and so I stand corrected on that. Well, I've uh, actually heard you on Steve's show a couple times and with uh, Michael Dukes, and I appreciated you uh, not saying that you were wrong. I appreciated that you were uh, getting the word out and getting people. I mean, because, you know, Randy, if you hear the same thing from the same guys over and over, it's like, eh, those guys are off on their tangent again. But, you know, you've come at things a different way with us a lot of times. And then, uh, so to me, when I heard you on Duke's show and on Steve's show, it uh, gave it a lot of legitimacy that maybe some people wouldn't legitimize if I said it or Dave said it. So I appreciated you getting on there and uh, spreading the word. I mean, it was good. It thank, was really good. Thank you very much, Randy. Appreciate okay. the call. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning. Who's this? This is Glenn. Glenn, go ahead. Hey, uh, I've been around a lot of gunfire and jets and helicopters and stuff. And uh, your introduction is just a little bit overproduced or something. I can't catch all the quotes. And I think I was hoping you could turn down that stadium music just a little bit. I mean, it's good production, but I want to hear them quotes. All right, we'll see what we can do about that. Thanks, Thank you. Glenn. Appreciate the call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, John. Just just one more time. Okay, John. One more time. What's on your mind? Uh, basically, uh, 
I wanted to mention I just got a you know communique from the Oath Keepers, uh, our chapter president out in uh, Tennessee, yeah. has reported that one of the local uh, Mormon stations that sells like canned food and you know various things. I don't know if this has hit the hit the web you know at large, but anyway. They were apparently approached by federal agents looking for lists of names of people who, you know, are, you know, stockpiling food and such. And basically the, you know, the operator said, Hey, we don't, you know, we don't keep records. It's a cash and carry kind of thing, but, you know, they're kind of putting the word out. And for anybody, you know, the Mormon community who's, you know, involved in that, I kind of keep your eyes open for people asking questions because I don't know how you guys feel, but I don't think it's any of their business what people do with their food. So. You know, just putting that out there. Under Bang. the Defense Authorization Act, um, which Randy just talked about, um, not only can they imprison um, U.S. citizens for being suspected of uh, being a terrorist or whatever, but one of the definitions that could define you or that could put you in that category of terrorist is having five or more days of food in your house. So um, that's probably part of the reason they're going after that. If you have... If you have more than five days of food, um, you might be a terrorist. And you don't have to be charged or there doesn't have to be any sort of uh, legal paperwork brought against you to be detained indefinitely under that Defense Authorization Act. You just have to be suspected. And having five days of food or more uh, makes you a suspected terrorist under that law. So you're listening to this audience? (laughs) This is real. This is is real. (laughs) This is real. This is not Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy. All right. Yeah, which, thanks, also, John. which also could be real. Which could be real. Stop saying that. 458-DOG is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Ron. Ron. Uh, you were talking about the police a little while ago. Have you guys heard that if you have $10,000 for a local lawyer, you can walk away from a DUI? Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, what Wouldn't that be an incentive program for the police to generate a certain number of DUIs just to help their friends in the lawyer business? <laughs> There's, yeah, there, um, it, that certainly could be. There's all sorts of economic incentives for the whole DUI thing, but that would definitely be one of them. Yep. Yeah, because, you know, a poor guy, he's not going to fight it. He's going to be stuck without driving. But we had a, a borough assembly chairman a couple of years ago that got a DUI, and as far as I know, he never stopped driving. We put an article up on our blog uh, a couple months ago. It was a repost of an article Jeff Berwick had up about um, ran- uh, rampant kidnapping in the U.S. And one of the things he brought up in there was that uh, wealthy people of a certain class um, are far less likely to go to jail or face any punishment for the same crime as as uh, poor people. So, yeah, that's... All right. Thank that, you guys for being all over it. Yeah. No, Thanks. thank you for the call. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Gee, I'm sorry, but could I have a Randy again like John had a John again? <laughs> uh, okay, Randy, again. go ahead. Okay. Uh, I had just called in in the interest of accuracy because I had made a misstatement last Saturday, but I just now heard Dave say something that I considered inaccurate. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but did you suggest that this bill, this National Defense Authorization Bill, S-1867, could threaten people and putting them in jail for having a the seven-day supply of food, as I don't know if you've read the bill. I've read uh, Section 1031 and 1032. It says nothing about uh, such things. We'll uh, we'll find that and put it up on the blog today, Randy. Yeah, we'll put it, that up today because yeah. it is it is in there. Well, if you it, have stored food, um, that qualifies you as uh, being suspected of terrorism. Same if you have missing fingers. That yeah. also qualifies you as being suspected of being a terrorist. Yeah, the, so the if you've been in the mining industry or if you have a cabin and some food in it, you know, you're you fall under that. In Senate Bill 1867? The bill says um I can jump in real quick. The bill says that it it authorizes the military to detain anyone suspected of terrorism. Um so what even what Rand Paul did the other day when he spoke about it, so it doesn't actually give any. Uh, and the specific bill does not say who a terrorist is. Yes, but that's, it does. Well, it does, but it also says anyone suspected of terrorism. No, it doesn't. No, wait a second. Are you reading uh, section 1031? I've got it in my hand right here. It I know that it talks about the definition about, of covered person. I know it does, and it also says the president doesn't have to follow that. Where does it say that? It says right in the one that actually passed said that the president can or may um, exclude the definitions. 
I think he has to give himself a waiver to do that. Gives the Secretary of Defense the right to waive that also. Well, I don't want to get too much in minutia on your show, but if you could point out on your blog spot and I'll go read that. That was already that was previously defined. Uh, that actually came out in 2008, 2009. Um, uh, that was the MIAC report was one of them. Homeland Security's definition of terrorism. Homeland Security definition of terrorism included those things, among others. Um, and that, that was one thing, like, the storable foods industry got up in arms about years ago. Okay, but I'm talking about S-18. Sure, so S-18 says if, whatever, you know, the Defense Authorization Act says if you are suspected of being a terrorist and they're using the same legal definition, because that's how they build legal precedent, is they have yeah. this definition and then they use that word in a future bill. You see, we're part this of doesn't, the, This doesn't happen in isolation. All of this is built on top of other things. Where part of the problem is, Randy, is that people didn't get all bent out of shape about the previous thing when it came through as a definition. It was setting a framework for something like this, which now goes out and, and starts uh, applying it wider and wider and wider. It, it's the same incrementalism that allows us to accept drinking a little bit of poison with each cup of state-sponsored water that they give us. And and in, until we until we reject it all out of hand, we're going to keep on incrementally killing ourselves with this poison. Am, am I am I getting through, Randy? Yes, but it specifically says here in Section 1031, covered person is people, a person who planned and so forth authorized the September 11th attack and uh, who was associated with Al Qaeda and the Taliban. It doesn't say anything about just terrorists in general. I don't see that, but. I'm open, you know, if I made a mistake, I want to know about it, because I want, I want the distillation of the truth is what I want. I want to know what's what. Well, I was really glad that we actually agreed on something the last call, so we'll end it with this. Uh-huh. Um, at least we can probably all agree that it was very disturbing that it passed with only seven senators voting against it. Yeah, I, I am troubled by this bill, but I just wanted to be accurate about this food supply thing. All right. Well, Randy, okay. keep in mind that you also didn't think that uh, it applied to American citizens right, last week. So, yeah, all right. We'll, we'll get at the research. The we'll, we'll have it on the blog for you. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, hello. This is Pat. Pat, go ahead. Hey, um, one thing I wanted to interject here, a great conversation. I'm glad you're bringing this up, but um, just wanted to mention the only way we're going to take care of this uh, problem we are having is through the political system. It's the only thing that is currently acceptable anymore. It's not going to work going back to the Constitution, unfortunately. Uh, But two things we all need to do. We need to get into our Republican Party, and a lot of the people that call into the show are are probably Ron Paul supporters. And the last uh, election around, uh, there was quite a showing uh, at the convention, and I think we all need to um, uh, infiltrate the Republican Party with constitutional principles and put pressure on our state government to, especially the Republican Party, to lean more to the right, uh, in fact, quite a ways more. And and the other thing we got to do is we need to get down on our knees, and we all need to turn to Jesus. That's how our country was founded, with a God-fearing electorate, and we all need to turn back to God, because without a moral foundation and, and a godly, spirit-led movement, we're never going to get anywhere. All right, Pat, thanks for the call. appreciate your point of view. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, this is Tim. Tim, what's on your mind? Uh, I caught... Uh... Randy's uh, uh, discussion and then your discussion about who a terrorist is, it kind of reminded me of the Foxworthy thing of you might be a redneck. (laughs) Well, you might be a terrorist if you have served your country honorably during the latest uh, war against terror. That's right. That is one of the definitions. I I mean, and I I talked to... to, uh, honorably discharged vet just the other day and this conversation came up and i mean it is it is so despicable they they i mean they they've put their lives on the line and now because they have what is it because they've had their eyes open to what the war on terror supposedly really isn't about or what yeah they've been exposed to what we're supposed to be afraid of, and they might speak out against it, and so therefore that would make them a terrorist. So I, I, I just had to put that in, in there. Well, thanks. thanks, thanks for that, Tim. Yeah, four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Is this me? It might be. Depends on who it is. This is Zach. And Zach, it's not you. Go ahead. It is. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, I just like to point out an interesting little tidbit of information. At any given time in any city in the country, but especially up here in Alaska, there's only three days' worth of food for the entire city. 
You mean like in the grocery stores? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's a really, the, really good point. In the event of an isolation, there's going to be a run on the groceries, and there's only going to be enough food for three days. Yep. Which, which means that people who have thought about that and have gone out and prepared for it and have gotten more than three days' worth of food in their own basements now have uh, qualified as terrorists. How does that make you feel? Well, I think it's a government control issue, probably. If we're suspicious for having more than enough food than what they'll give us in the grocery stores, then I think they're trying to get us to a point where we can be controlled in that, where they control all the food supply. Right. In, in in Katrina, you saw people who actually had supplies in their houses who stayed and didn't go down to the stadium to be, you know, left there for days on end with no food right. or water. And what did they do with the people who stayed in their homes because they'd prepared? Did they round them up at gunpoint? Um, yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call, Zach. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Is Aaron. Aaron, what's on your mind? I'll just listen to Randy's call, and it just seems like his whole definition of it is based on the premonition that they wouldn't, I mean, our government really wouldn't do something like that. But, I mean, like uh, Tim was just saying, the last, if you look just at last year, the FBI came in here and was pulling in guys right off of Wainwright and basically drilling them. Anybody that had any kind of patriotic tattoo or um, bumper sticker of any kind on their vehicle was getting pulled in and getting drilled and getting the fifth degree. And weren't they targeting Oath Keepers? Yeah, yeah. Any military guy that um, joined Oath Keepers, the FBI paid a visit to and considered them a potential terrorist. They can't tell me that this government isn't defining anybody that loves liberty or isn't at 100% on board with continuity of government as a terrorist. Randy, wake up. Thanks for the call, Aaron. 458-TALK is the number. We're almost out of time. Good morning. They didn't hold. we got about a minute left, gentlemen. We need an action point for today. Okay. Action point number one is at noon, um, go down to Veterans Memorial Park and meet with the Occupy guys. It's We're way too late in this to be bickering amongst ourselves. If we don't come together now, uh, we can just write the whole thing off. Didn't uh, what, there was a there was an old saying about we we need to hang together or we'll hang separately. Yeah, Ben Franklin. <laughs> if we don't all hang together, we'll all hang separately. Surely. So that's number one, and number two is uh, visit the blog patriotslament.blogspot.com. We have some uh, posts up there with phone numbers and emails, so you can get in touch with your state and uh, national representatives and ask them who has jurisdiction in this state, and ask them. How how can this how can what's going on in this city be justified if they have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution? And and, and what are they going to do about it? And what are they going to do about it? Because they can't kick the can. We're the ones. I mean, we've kicked the can by voting for them, which I have my own opinion on. But if you believe in the voting process and politics and all that junk, then they are the ones ultimately who should be able to do something about this. And if they won't do something about it, where does that leave us, Dave? I know what my plan is in that case, but everybody's going to have to make their own decision. All right. I would interject they won't even talk about it. You're going to have a couple of more show Tuesday. There's a, there's any possibility, but let's find out. For all those people out there who believe in voting and called in and trashed on me when I said voting was stupid, it's your chance to prove me wrong. Go out, call your representatives, and see if they do something. Bury the myth. We're out of time. See you next week.